Good morning. We have a hectic couple of days ahead of us. I'm amazed that I have so many little paintings. I can't lie, I'm stressed. Didn't grab the keys and lock myself out. Can I be honest? <laughs> so I was just kind of chilling working on this still life and then remembered that for the next three-ish weeks I'm gonna be away. I have a dog sitting job starting tonight and then back-to-back -back jobs that will keep me out of the house for three weeks basically. So since that job starts tonight we have quite a few things today that we need to take care of for the next several weeks. First and foremost, I want to try to finish up this still life. Second, there is an event at a gallery in Atlanta tomorrow. The gallery is called The Bakery and the event is called... I think it's called Bring Your Own Art, where basically artists in the city can bring whatever artwork they want to sell. There's like a five dollar hanging fee you hang the work yourself, you bring the label, and then your work is up for sale that night. And whoever comes by during the three hour event to buy your work, you get all the money. <laughs> so the gallery is not taking a cut of the profit, which I actually don't know if the bakery ever does, specifically. I have worked with the bakery before, I've done like charity events with them, but this will be the first time selling something and it'll be the first time selling work in person for me for a while so i'm a little bit nervous <laughs> i was hoping to have some new work available for the event but i am definitely not going to so i'll have to bring some old work and we will work on that today i gotta go around the house and you'll know, find whatever i think could sell and i would be willing to show and then I have to make labels and print them out and get those ready. I have to figure out how to price everything again. It's been a long time since I've priced anything. I haven't sold anything since like early last year, so it's been a minute. I don't remember how I was exactly pricing everything, so I had to figure that out. I'm sure I have it written down somewhere. And then I just have to like prep food and stuff to take with me and also prep some supplies because I'm, like I said, basically going to be out of the house. For the next three weeks I don't think I'm going to come back at any point so if I want to work on any art for the next three weeks I have to bring it with me um, so maybe I'll bring some like watercolors and a sketchbook that way I can do something that's like a little bit mess free I don't think you can be a little bit mess free you're either entirely mess free or not at all but like I said my priority at the moment because it's like nine o'clock is to finish the still life or at least get it to a point where I'm like happy with it because I'm still filming this video and I would like to get that video done because then I have all my uploads I think for the weeks that I'm gone so I won't have to stress about filming something new and putting it up quickly so enough you up and let's get started Okay, so I just finished filming the outro for the still life. She's done. I'll put in I'll put in some um, like detail shots if you didn't watch the last video, but also I will leave the last video linked so you can go see the process of this. Now I'm gonna go finish putting this vlog together, and then we'll start collecting work from around the house to sell. Every time I pull out these little paintings, I am amazed that I have so many little paintings. 
Oh, this might be good because of brat. Maybe people will be like, I want that little brat painting. So I just ordered these binder clips. As I was talking about not having a way to display paperwork. I'm stressed. I can't lie. <laughs> I can't lie. I'm stressed. just got back into the house. I um, took the dog for a walk around 10 and then brought him back, brought him inside, fed him and I was taking something outside and I just didn't grab the keys and lock myself out. So it is now 12.35. I was outside for basically two hours. And it was fine. It was fine because luckily I picked like the coolest day of the summer so far to get caught outside. It was like mid 70 degrees outside, but I did get bit multiple times. So that part was cool. Luckily the, the fun is over and I just get to spend the next like four hours or so thinking about the show tonight. I keep trying to prepare myself for the worst case scenario. and reminding myself that the worst case scenario isn't actually that bad. Worst case scenario is no one even stops to look at my work and talk to me. That's it. If that happens, cool. I get to walk around and look at other artists' work and hang out with my friend. The most important thing is that I'm getting myself out there and I'm doing something that's really scary to me, which is even going to something like this and putting my work up on the wall and asking people to buy it. That's so scary to me. And so even if I don't sell anything, I've already accomplished something by doing this thing that's really scary to me. And that is all that matters. And I will do it again. So getting back on track, not letting everything of today phase me. I've got the labels printed. I've got the artwork. I do need to put these names on the backs. I think only this one has the name and it's in like pencil. So I'd like to rewrite that. I just need to cut these. I'm going to take this notebook with me. I don't have any business cards, so my thought is that if anyone asks, I can say, oh, give me your email and I'll add you to my mailing list. So I'm going to cut these out and I think find a plastic baggie to keep them in. And then I'll tape my tote bag so I can carry this as well. <laughs> So I couldn't find a plastic bag and I don't really want to snoop that bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to
Can I be honest? <laughs> Can I be really honest right now? I don't wanna go to this thing. <laughs> I don't want to, but I'm going to. I just finished getting ready. My friend is driving us. I'm not gonna abandon her, though she'll be just fine. <laughs> Is that the, this chair in the way? Which actually, this reminds me that I need to clean up my white sneakers a little bit. It's gonna be fine. I'm just gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. This way or this way? I'm back. <laughs> so I didn't take a lot of video or picture. I meant to take a picture at the very least of my work on the wall and I don't even think I did that. I was just really busy talking to my friend who I went with. The event was great. It was mostly a lot of artists putting up their work and so no one really bought anything as far as I saw because we were all just, you know, artists trying to sell work. <laughs> there was a very adorable eight-year-old girl there who was selling these like Nintendo figurines that people bought. I think she's the only one that sold work. <laughs> um, she was very sweet. She came up to me at the end of the show as I was packing my stuff up and she told me that my painting was her favorite. <laughs> um, she was very sweet. Everyone was really supportive. Everyone was really nice. I should have gotten more pictures and like Instagram handles and names but I was honestly a little bit frazzled and it was very warm in there and I was sweating as I was trying to <laughs> hang my work up. I highly recommend, no matter how scary it seems, no matter how scared you are, to find a way to interact with other artists in your community. I'm not great at this. It is one of my greatest weaknesses. It's something that I really want to get better at and I'm going to work on that with you. Like you're going to watch me figure out how to interact with my local art community. Um, talking to people about their art, talking to people about your art, talking about materials, talking about ideas, talking about things that seem entirely unconnected to the artwork itself, but you know, inform your work because it's about your life is really inspiring and really motivating and just makes you feel more complete in a way. There's like a myth that you know, artists are so like secluded, so closed off, so different from everyone else in the world that nobody can understand us, that, you know, we have to like hold ourselves up in our studio and cabins in the woods somewhere and our homes and just make work and not connect with people. But I think that's really damaging both for your work but also like your mental health and people in general and your community and you know just the people that you surround yourself with. I don't think that work, I don't think that art is good when it's kept from people. You know what I mean? But I'm really hungry and really thirsty <laughs> after all that talking. 
If you can go to an event like this with a friend who's another artist, that's also really helpful. It did sort of limit, like I wasn't talking to everyone in the room because I was mostly talking to my friend, but also if I hadn't been there with someone who made me feel comfortable, I still wouldn't have spoken to anyone and I would have just like lingered until somebody felt bad enough to talk to me and I hate when people feel bad and feel like they have to talk to me because that's not a conversation I want to have. I appreciate it and I understand it but it doesn't work for me. But having someone there it's kind of like you know the idea of having like a wingman. You have someone who understands your work and understands you and when you sort of falter and can't really speak to your work or answer questions because everybody gets nervous it's good to have someone there that can be like ah, I know what you're talking about um, but everyone there was just really nice uh, really understanding there were you know various levels of awkwardness and confidence and you think that you're going to be the only one that doesn't know what you're doing and that's never true <laughs> But the funny thing about having that kind of anxiety is that you you know that it's irrational, but it feels real. So I understand that, trust me. <laughs> um, before I left, I had to like lay in bed and close my eyes and do like deep breaths and eventually I felt a lot better. I'm really tired because I'm still running on like five hours of sleep. <laughs> um, and I will see you tomorrow morning for a little bit more of a debrief and a summation of what I've learned in the past two very stressful, very eventful days and uh, what I plan for the future. Now, yeah, I'm gonna eat something now. I'm really hungry, I'm really thirsty. And I have to wash my face because I put makeup on. <laughs> Hello, I've been editing the video <laughs> and um, I'm looking back at what I just said and I'm, I'm pretty sure I summed up the last two days and I, I said everything I needed to say. So I will not talk your ear off anymore. I will simply say thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, the only reason I went to this show today through the little panic attack I had about it was because I was making this video. So because of you. I made it. I did the thing that scared me and it was not bad and I had lots of fun and I feel so much better knowing that tomorrow I have nothing to do but you know the things that I normally have to do but I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to, I don't have to stress about anything um, and that makes me very happy. Uh, yes. Thank you for watching this video. I will be looking at more opportunities for artists, both in my city and as well as, uh, like, exhibition opportunities abroad or in states nearby, and also, uh, like, uh, uh, opportunities for publications and if you would like a video on looking for opportunities for artists I know that it is very difficult and it's very stressful um, if you would like a video about me going through that process let me know and I will I will happily document that for you um, because we are we are learning all of this together and um, I couldn't do it without you so thanks for being here I really appreciate it I'll see you again very soon. Bye.